Hello good people and welcome to Finest Girls Hub. Here we learn, we connect and we grow. In this short video, I'm going to walk you through tips and tricks using absolute relative and missed referencing. These are very handy ways you can speed up calculations in Excel or financial modeling. As usual, let's head to Excel and see how to get this done. So before we start off, a little Excel basics to warm you up. You know, when you're doing formulas or calculations in Excel, you start off with an equal sign and then you reference your cell. So example here, I've referenced D10, I expect to get 25%. Now by default, why I copy this formula to, okay, and the result I get, it's going to be dependent on the layout. So here, I had 25% earlier, I moved to the right, I get 20% and so on. So the results here are relative to the position of my source reference. So by default, all your cell references are relative, meaning in the direction you copy them to, your source will also be picked up in that direction. This is very useful in calculations. However, when you have a layout like this, so this is the case study. We have some items and we are supposed to allocate them to branches going across the columns so i'm using these rates to allocate for each branch so in the end we want to calculate how much is going to each branch okay for each item in this range of cells we can do this at a go or if you don't have absolute and relative referencing on your fingertips you may have to do this one by one and we don't want that so the trick is when you reference any cell, in this case, I'm referencing this and I'm going to be multiplying by this. Okay, I need to determine which column or row in this combination I am going to lock and which I'm going to make free. Okay, so if I lock both row and column in my reference, I have what we call an absolute reference. If I lock only one, either row or column, I have a missed reference. And if I leave it at the default state, I have relative reference. So the trick is when you are doing any calculation, determine which column or row needs to be fixed. So in this case, you realize that all my quantity is in column C and then my rates for allocation are in row 10. So if I'm able to lock column C and row 10 in any calculation that I'm going to do here, I should be able to get all the answers at a go. So the first trick is to select the range of cells. You have your active cell here and then you do an equal sign and then you select the first one. You can use the left arrow key to do that. So I have C11, column C and row 11. We determined that column C was going to be locked. When you reference the cell, you use the F4 key. So the first F4 key will give you absolute reference in locking both. But we want the column locked so we'll do another f4 this time is row we don't want that another f4 and this time we want the column locked and that's what we have so the dollar sign before the column means that the column is going to be locked then i'm going to multiply this and then up arrow select the 25 percent which is in d10 we don't want row 10 to move as we go down so again f4 f4 that dollar sign against row 10. So with this, I'm now in a position to apply this calculation to all these cells at a go. And what do you press? You press Control Enter instead of the normal Enter. So Control Enter will now calculate for each cell here. So you observe that if I stand here, I'm correctly calculating 1117 times 15%. So anytime you are doing calculations in this layout determine which column or row has to be locked and then lock it appropriately this is the first example now let's go to the second example so in this example we have simple calculations on sales and profit but i'm going to use this example to show you another way you can use absolute and relative referencing but quickly let's do these calculations first i'm going to sum up the first six months here to do that I can press alt equal to which gives me the auto sum okay 
when I'm here, I want to do average. So, so I'll start my average and then I'll select this range up to June and then I have my average here. The thing is that if I calculate any cell and I want to copy down, I can stand in the empty cell and press Ctrl D. That's a handy way. Now, profits, I can select the whole range and then I can select the first cell, which is my active cell, and then do my calculation here sales minus expense and because i've selected these range of cells i'm going to press ctrl enter and then i have my calculation the trick i want to show you is how to calculate year to date profit using mixed referencing so year to date profit simply is a cumulative profit as we go on in the year so january only if you are in january january to february if you are standing in february and so on now to get this what I need to do is to start off my sum, okay, and then select the first profit. And I press shift column. So shift column will just duplicate the cell reference. So C14 to C14. Now, because I want to be expanding this range as I copy to the right, I want to keep column C fixed. So to do that, I'll step in the first cell reference, F4, F4, F4. So column C is going to be fixed. As I copy to the right, then it will just be expanding to give me the cumulative sum. So I'm going to close this and then take the first one and then right click, Control R. Control R is to copy to the right. So if I'm standing here, you observe that I'm now referencing C14, which I locked to H14, which was made relative. Okay. Now, if you look at the calculation we are supposed to do here, which is percentage sales change, percentage expense change, and percentage profit change. Thankfully, this is laid out the same way we have this one. So using relative referencing, you can calculate the first one and then just copy it down. So if I stand here, my first sales change for February is going to be current February divided by previous month, which is January minus one. So that's how you calculate the percentage sales change. I press Ctrl Enter and I have it for each of these months here. As I mentioned earlier, because of the position, we can use relative referencing to get our result in this case. So I'll just highlight this and then press Ctrl D. Okay, so I've given you two tricks. Now, the third one, I want you to work on it. So this is going to be sent to you or you can find this workbook in the YouTube comment section or you can access and download it using this link that is showing on your screen. Give it a shot. The challenge is that we want to calculate all these cells for a full annual budget. Okay, so what we are going to do is we are going to use January's assumption and then use these quarterly rates, okay, to project for each quarter. So we'll calculate February and March on January's rate and then we project April, May, June using the second quarter's rate and so on. So if you do this correctly, you should end up with a layout like this. So your final answer should look something like this. You start off with January and then you project February and March using January's rate. Then you put in the subtotals and then you come to April, you project on March using 3% which is the second quarter's rate and so on. Now if you use absolute and relative referencing you should be able to complete this in under 5 minutes. Can you take that challenge? So if you are able to do this just email your answer to this email. In a subsequent video in a subsequent video I'm going to post the solution on how to get this completed in under 5 minutes. The answer when you get it correct is going to be 500,000 at the end of the year. As usual, the best way to learn is to get your hands dirty. So please practice and add it to your list of Excel tricks. For more of these short videos, you can send add to this WhatsApp number. We will add you to our broadcast list. We will send you videos directly on Mondays and Fridays. All our old videos are on our YouTube channel, Finest Girls Up. Please visit and subscribe for notification of new videos or connect with us on any of these social media handles. Thank you so much for watching.